Just extol our helper. Anything you've come here with, forget about it. Just bless his name. Bless him. Lift him up. Extol him. There's none like him. Let him know how you feel about him. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. In the name of Jesus. Genesis 28 verse 15. Genesis 28 verse 15. Behold, I am with you. And I will keep you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you. That's where I want you to pay attention to. I will not leave you until I have done what I've spoken to you. You're going to declare and declare, say in this season, in the name of Jesus, God's word comes to pass speedily, quickly, and without warning in my life. In the name of Jesus, in this season, I decree and declare that God's word comes to pass speedily, quickly, and without warning. Pray that prayer from your heart. In this season, I decree and declare that God's word comes to pass speedily, quickly, and without warning. What he has spoken to me in the name of Jesus will come to pass. God will never leave me nor forsake me until what he has done, what he has spoken is done in my life. Pray that prayer from your heart. Come on, pray that prayer. Say in the name of Jesus in this season. Decree it. Don't pray. Don't, don't beg God about it. Say in this season, I command that everything that is withholding God's word from coming to pass is out of my way in the name of Jesus I command the heavens to be open in the name of Jesus and God's intent God's reign reign of harvest reign upon my life I will not be the same again in the name of Jesus every discouragement out of my way in the name of Jesus every limitation out of my way in the name of Jesus in this season I decree and declare that God's word comes to pass in my life quickly speedily and without warning thank you father in Jesus precious name we pray father we thank you thank you for yesterday Thank you ahead of time for the Tuesday service. We give you the praise. Thank you for the many testimonies. Thank you for everything you've done. Take all the glory. Take all the honor. Take all the adoration and thanksgiving. Today, Lord, you'll never recover from a, a good start. Lord, today start well with us. Today we command our days. We declare in the name of Jesus that your will be done. We will not make mistakes Amen. and we are directed in the right path. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, give the Lord a mighty, 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 mighty hand. Be seated. God bless you. Love you right back. God bless you. Job chapter 8, verse 7. 
Job chapter 8 verse 7, though your beginning was small, yet your latter end would increase abundantly. One of the reasons why people don't believe when God has prophesied that this year you will end well is because they're looking at the smallness of their beginning or where they are right now. Weeping can tarry till night and joy can come in the morning. How do you explain that? Because in the night, people ought to be sleeping. While you are sleeping, while you have given up, when people sleep, they surrender their will, their strength, everything to nature. That is when joy comes. He said, be still and know. There's a side of God you may not know until you are still. I prophesy. This year will not end until you end well in the name of Jesus. Until you end well in the name of Jesus. Many Christians don't know the God they serve. A lot of people go to church. A lot of people say amen to things. But they are not sure the God they serve. The God that can take a rib and multiply the rib and become a woman. Is the God you are saying or you are thinking cannot make this year a round off for you in grand style. He said, I crown the year for you with goodness and your path will draw fatness. That is faith. When you believe that and you confess and you begin to walk in line with that. Say after me, this year, year will not end until God crowns this year for me with goodness and my path will drip fatness in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. Have you imagined the kind of God that can take a rib and, and make it to be a woman? Pastor Biodun, what is happening is that I, I, I imagine that by now, by now, yeah, yeah, it's true. Maybe you put your strength in men. Maybe. My times are in his hands. My times. Sometimes I look, I, I think about how God feels. Because you can have faith on the surface, but on your inside, you have doubt. And all things we do, they are naked before God. Sometimes you think you are walking in faith, but you are just positive. Faith in God means you believe his word and you move by his word. Anybody believe in God and moving by faith? And the devil is trying to discourage you to limit what God wants to do in your life. I pray in the name of Jesus. This is the year you will see his manifestation the most. In the name of Jesus. If you read uh, that Job 8-7 in the NLT version, NLT version, he said, though you started with little, <laughs> you will end with much. Though you started with little, you will end. That's what I believe. I don't know about you. That's what I believe. I'm not part of those who are waiting to see what God will do. I believe it that I will end with much. You shall end with much. Yeah. That amen, can it be louder? Yeah. Can it be faith feel somebody? Yeah. In Zechariah chapter 4 verse 10, allow me to read the NLT to you because of time. Zechariah 4 and verse 10. The Bible says, do not despise these small beginnings. I love you to see the next statement. The Bible says, for the Lord rejoices to see the work, be, the work begin. Human beings despise the beginning of things. But God loves it when you start. Why? Because it's a display of faith. When you move and you look around and say, ah, I don't have enough to finish this. Lord, I depend. That would drive you to pray. That would drive you to faith. I am convinced that no matter what people have said, no matter what your bank have said, no matter what has happened around you, you will end this year with grand style. Amen. Can I have a faith-filled amen? amen? Do not despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. To see the plumb line in the Zerubbabel's hand. And the seven lambs represent the eyes of the Lord that said the old, they rejoice to see the plumb in the hand. What is the plumb? When you, are, when you are making something straight, the beginning of the work. Therefore, I prophesy to you, 
You that started the work, you'll complete it. Amen. I say you'll complete it. Amen. Small things don't discourage God. Why? Because God is the multiplier. <laughs> one plus one is two, two plus two is four, four plus four is eight. Eight plus eight is 16. But can you compare it? Can you put this side by side with two times two is four, four times four is 16. 16 times 16. Think about it. Think about it. God is the multiplier. He is never, God is not afraid of death. Why? He's resurrection and life. <laughs> the things that are impossible with men, they are possible with God. Therefore, whatever you came here with has ended today. Amen. As you release your faith, the impossible shall be possible for you. Amen. In John chapter 6, John chapter 6, allow me because of time to read from verse 6. In verse 6, the Bible says, Jesus Christ, you know, he had preached to people. And as he was preaching to them, they were going to the wilderness. A lot of them, they forgot their, their work, they forgot everything. What an anointing. But he asked his, his disciples, where shall we get food to give these people? Please be mindful of the fact that in the desert, no supermarket, no market. Money will be useless, even if you had one in your pocket. But he asked a question in verse 5. John 6 verse 5. Jesus lit up his eyes, seeing a great multitude coming towards him. And he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread that this may eat? But this he said to test him, for he himself knew what to do. It wasn't a mistake. He is a multiplier. <laughs> he could do it any day. If you heard that Jesus is the same today, yesterday, today, and forever, which means your case is not big enough to make God not to be God. Hey, so you, you are carrying what you're going through like is, is heaven and earth. I say what you're going through right now is not the first God has dealt with. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, you will end with a testimony. Amen. I say you will end with a testimony. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. He himself knew what to do. What does that tell our intelligent mind? Any day he, he knew exactly what to do. Any day he could multiply the bread. It's not a fluke. He knew what to do. Verse 7, you know the story. Philip answered and said, Two denarii, what of bread is not sufficient for them? Oh, since you mentioned bread, it is bread that will multiply. <laughs> since you mentioned it, what are you thinking in your heart right now? Are you thinking, ah, I need this? Are you thinking, I need that? Since you multiply, since you mentioned it, may God multiply. May He do exceedingly abundantly above what you think or ask in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God made two people, but he made the earth to inhabit over 8 billion people. But he put two people there. That's a God of abundance. And for you to know that uh, there were plenty today was not an accident. He told them from the beginning, multiply. Replenish the earth, subdue the earth, have dominion. In other words, God made, a, 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 if God gives you a shoe, it will never be your size. It will be beyond you. Give it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shake it together, running over. God is a God of abundance. He's, he's never afraid of smallness because he can multiply you in a minute. That's why I want you to release your faith. Because where God is taking you to is not a man that is your lie. He said you will end well. You will finish well. Now, he has said you will finish your life well, but this year is a representation of your life. Therefore, this year is not permitted to end, except you don't have your faith lifted up based on his words. This year is not permitted to end until you end well. Until you end well. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Those who look at you and sum you up don't know God. Don't know God. I'm working with 
uh, Brother Alex as he walks with a brother in this church from Maraba Church. When he told me the first time, I, I doubted God. Millions of dollars. They just picked him. I said, ah, Alex, follow this guy. He has made the minister of this country. I don't know the exact figure, but something like $200,000. Um, what am I saying? $200 million. A brother like you. I thought, oh, this is a 419 call. He has met the men. According to him, they were all shocked. How did you get it from nowhere? <laughs> so I said, put a team around him. This is not a fluke. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody was shocked. He himself is thinking, am I the one? Until he met the minister, the minister spoke some things to him. He was now shocked that, look, this thing, he's already slated to attend uh, training in the U.S. Fantastic. Anybody who sums you up, don't know God. They've not seen miracles before. Therefore, in the name of Jesus. Now, when God is doing anything to your neighbor, if you dare believe, it will be your turn. Which means God is in the neighborhood. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, you will end this year in a grand style. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. What are you supposed to do? Be a friend of God. All these playing games you end. Be a friend of God. Develop a relationship with him and build it. Build it. It's good to be morally sound, but that's not all there is. Build a relationship with God. And how to do it, because some people don't know, is to start by, don't play with your prayer. Don't play with your study. Somebody said when you're praying, you are talking to God. When you are studying your Bible, God is talking to you. Let God do most of the talking. There are Christians that don't read their Bibles at all. There are pastors that read Bibles to preach. <laughs> Just to talk to people. God told Bishop Oedekpo, there is peace on the top if you're interested. And I feel like God is saying the same thing to you. There's a, there's, there's, there's a space on top if you're interested. And how you do it is to build it. How do you build a building? It starts with a plan. This holiday season is not a season that you'll be taking ice cream alone and chicken. No. Have a plan on ground. You won't hit January 2nd and start uh, forming fasting. No. Your body will not take it. Start severing some things from now. Start planning. Where I came from in West Africa, they said, if you do what you've not done before, you will see what you've not seen before. Build a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Number two, in 2 Corinthians 2.11, 2 Corinthians 2.11, the Bible says, let Satan take advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. What happens many times is that the enemy takes advantage of us. The first time I remember going to my village, boys that were my mates in the village, they, they took me to the farm. <laughs> I was so tripped. Those were things I saw in the TV. And they killed a scorpion in front of me. How they killed a scorpion was a marvel to me. They pinched the back with a broom. And the scorpion wanting to kill or fight the, 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 the person, person pinched in the back killed itself. Let me tell you, his word in Christ, they are here and amen. Everything God has promised you is, is a done deal. The devil has walked with God before. He knows that God does not lie. He can use what you have to deal with you. Like your mouth. I'm finished. How can you say that? Knowing that your mouth has been touched with the coals from, from his altar. When we prophesy on your life, you're not ordinary. 
When you go to places you're not supposed to go. When you say things you're not supposed to say. When you gather with people you're not supposed to gather with. You don't know that what follows you depends on what you follow. The devil can, he can't stop what God has done in your life. He has devices. You must be on guard for his devices. You must make sure you understand exactly. You, you monitor everything. You monitor everything. I think in 1 Corinthians 15, um, chapter 2, verse 15, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 15, the Bible says, but he who is spiritual judges some things. All things. Before you say something, you judge it. Before you do something, you judge it. Before you, you, you mix with something, you judge that thing. Hmm, can I do it? No, 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 no. I shouldn't do that. It judges all things. We are not ignorant of the device of the enemy. Be smart. Don't let the enemy stop you. Don't let him take advantage of you. Number three, because of time. In Romans 12 and verse 1, Romans 12 and verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Now, you need to know who wrote this. This is the custodian of grace. He said, in all that I've told you, please, you must handle this. I beseech you by the mercy of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. I've never seen living sacrifices before. I only see sacrifices that are dead. In other words, every single day you live, you must live like you're giving your life as a sacrifice. You see, it's very easy to give money. It's hard for some people, but... Once I just drop money and I go away, I can go back doing what I'm, I, I'm supposed to do or, or anything the devil wants me to do. And I will say, I've given money in church. Very easy. A one-time thing. But when you live for something, consistently is your lifestyle. To be here this morning is a sacrifice. During your break, you say, Father, thank you for this break. You bring out your Bible from your phone, from your iPad, and start studying. Even if it's a verse, meditating on it is a sacrifice. When you say no to some things that people say yes to, it's a sacrifice. Paul says in all these things that, I wish I could read to you, give me the Amplified Bible. Amplified of verse 1. I appeal to you therefore, brethren, I beg you in view of all the mercies of God, that you make a decisive dedication of your body. Presenting all your members and faculties. Your members are your nose, your ears, your eyes. Present them. David said, I made a covenant with my eyes. Until you start operating from this Romans 12, 1, you've not started. He said, presenting your, your, your members and your faculties as a living sacrifice. Your appetite, your interest, the things you want. They are the things that bounce you off. Satan will never tempt you with what you don't want. So monitor, how to start is monitor what you like. And monitor how you want what you like. The Bible says it's well pleasing to God. Well pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and your spiritual worship. So worship is not singing a song. It's a life. Worship is giving God what you think he wants in your sight. Do you think it's worth it for you to stop going there? Do you think it's worth it? Do you think the investment of God is worth it in your life to stop lying? Do you think the invest, what you are expecting God to do and your relationship with him and you don't want to hurt him, do you think it's worth it for you to make that decision right now. Think about it. In Hebrews 10 verse 5. Hebrews 10 verse 5. This is what Jesus Christ said when he came to the earth. Therefore, when he came into this world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. Wow. So all the booze we are killing in the Old Testament, he does not desire. He doesn't have interest. What about money? If that's what you put in front of you, it doesn't have interest. 
What about uh, I gave my car for them to use for 12 days of glory? He doesn't have interest. The reason why, that's why God did not respect Cain and his offering. He respected Abel and his offering. Offering is important. Sacrifice is good. But much more, sacrifice of your body. He says when he came into this world, the first thing he uttered is a sacrifice, an offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In verse, verse 6, the Bible says, Lo, verse 6, in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you have no pleasure. No pleasure. In verse 7, he says, Then I said, Behold, or if you, you are reading the KJV, he said, Lo, I have come in the volume of books. It is written of me to do your will. So sacrifice, presenting your body, is to do his will. Think about it. What has God demanded from you? Throughout this year that you didn't do, are you going to enter into 2024 again? If you want your little to become big. In fact, Job 8.7, the KJV version. Job 8.7, KJV. Job 8.7, he said, Though thy beginning was small, yet your latter end should on a very good day. It should. Greatly, not increase, greatly. If it's not increasing, you need to listen to these things. In, verse, uh, in, in, in Proverbs 19.20, Proverbs 19.20, Hallelujah. He said, listen to counsel and receive instruction. Let me say that to your neighbor because people, sometimes they are here but they don't listen or they're listening for something, someone else. Say to your neighbor, say, listen to counsel and receive instruction. Find the new neighbor, say, new neighbor, listen to counsel and receive instruction that you may be wise in your latter days. Let me tell you something. If everybody processes it well, the world would have been straight. If everybody, process, including you, including me, you need people to counsel you. You know you don't have eyes behind you. You need people to, to surround you. Particularly, you need God to guide you. If you only follow what you think, sometimes you may not be right. There's a way that seems right to a man. The end is destruction. It seems right to the man. You put a knife to his throat, he, th ah, he thought he was right. But the end is destruction. You will not miss it. Amen. That amen is not correct. Amen. I say you will not miss it. Amen. Deuteronomy 32, 29. Bible says, oh, that they were wise. That they understood this. That they would consider their latter end. The question I'm asking is, the way you're running your marriage, are you considering the latter end? The way you're running your life, the way you're running your career, the way you are behaving, are you considering your latter end? I want to round off by showing you Psalm 90 verse 12. Psalm 90 verse 12. Moses said, so teach us, because Moses wrote this psalm, to number our days. That we may gain our hearts. Gain a heart of wisdom. One version says that we may teach us to allot our time. That we may apply our heart to wisdom. What does the NLT say? In this verse 12. Teach us to realize the brevity of life. So that we may grow in wisdom. Listen to me. If you are wise, if you walk in wisdom. And wisdom is not calling craftiness. If you walk in the word of God, you'll be shocked that the devil will be almost non-existent in your life if you walk in wisdom. How can you walk with the only wise God and not be wise? So the thing you want to think about is how do you answer things? How do you handle things? That step you're about to take after the service, is it from God or from the devil? In verse 14, Psalm 90 verse 14, 
He said, oh, satisfy us early with your mercy that we may rejoice and be glad for how many days? All the days of our lives. So it is possible for you to rejoice all the days of your life. There are people, people envy. But personally, because they don't walk in wisdom, people are just envying them from outside. They are not really enjoying the grace of God upon their life because you need wisdom to access some things that God has planned for you. Even though you're beginning to be little, your latter end will greatly increase. I want you to rise to your feet. Rise to your feet and say, Lord Jesus, let my end be better than my beginning. Pray that prayer. Let my end be better than my beginning. Begin to pray from your heart that anything that says, I will beg at the end of my life will not come to pass. Anything that says I will beg at the end of my life will not come to pass. Invoke Proverbs 4.18 that the path of the just is like a shining light. I've been justified. So my path is exactly like a shining light. I shine brighter and brighter. Come on, prophesy. I will never be small. I will never be little. Cause the root of stagnation. Say, I will not stagnate. I will not be on a spot. In the name of Jesus. Pray that prayer the way you want it. Pray into your womb. Pray into your life. Say, I will multiply. My latter end would greatly increase. Prophesy. Oh, karabaka satarababa. I can't hear you, church. Say, I will never be small. In the name of Jesus, I walk in strange wisdom. In the name of Jesus, my latter end will greatly increase. In the name of Jesus, I go conquering and to conquer. This is the least I will ever be. In the name of Jesus, the Lord crowns this year for me with goodness. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. I pray that you will never be small. God will increase you. The people you need to meet, you will meet them. The resources you need, receive them. Everything that will make you multiply, receive it right now. May God help you. So shall it be. In Jesus' precious name.